good afternoon everybody my name is ramakrishnan i'll be the moderator for the rooftop solar discussion uh, for a living i develop strategy for cleanmax solar with a specific focus on distributed generation so distribution generation includes uh, rooftop uh, solar projects as well as open access projects so before we start ahead with this discussion i request the panel to introduce themselves yeah hi everyone uh, myself uh, girish kadam uh, i represent uh, ikra ratings uh, ikra is uh, a rating agency and also a moody's investor service group company uh, we assign the ratings uh, to the corporate entities uh, across the uh, sectors uh, for both bank lines as well as for the market uh, date instruments uh, within the ikra we have quite extensive uh, rating coverage uh, uh, when it comes to the power sector to just to give some specifics uh, uh, we have outstanding ratings for uh, a prominent ipps in the wind sector almost for about uh, 4000 megawatt of aggregate capacity we have also rated quite prominent ipps in the solar sector uh, almost with aggregate capacity of close to 2000 megawatt Uh, we also do the ranking exercise for state owned distribution utilities uh, under the uh, uh, pfc and the ministry of power uh, mandate so as a uh, in addition to ratings we also do the sectoral research for power wind and uh, solar so i lead the uh, power sector for ikra ratings so that's about me i am devraj representing fourth partner energy based out of hyderabad we are primarily into rooftop solars most of our presence is in the northern market we are just entering tamil nadu recently we specialize mainly on rooftops and ground mounted projects all the i think maximum capacity is about 1 1.5 megawatt so we have a, a minimum presence right now in tamil nadu we are trying to increase our presence by concentrating in these areas thank you Yeah. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Gambir Balian. I am uh, representing Everest Industries Limited as solar business. Uh, Everest uh, uh, is a 80 year old company into a roofing solution. Uh, company makes the pre-engineered steel building, roofing sheets, asbestos sheets, and installs uh, provide the complete solutions. We have recently entered into the uh, solar business because we have a we are a background of the roofings. and a uh, lot of problem we um, investors and uh, everybody epc is facing the challenges at site that uh, there the roof is not suitable for the installation of the solar projects we enter into this business and uh, we have a uh, uh, everest industries having eight plants located in all india bases and various uh, cities is having the uh, our regional offices thank you Hello, uh, I'm Akshay Shaknyotri from Oriano Solar. Oriano um, has been in the solar business for around five years. We were earlier in the avatar of Cecil Octo, uh, where we uh, installed the solar thermal plant of 50 megawatt, and uh, we have entered the, into the PV arena around three years back in uh, the name of Oriano, and here we have done roughly around uh, 125 megawatt. out of which uh, 10 megawatt is rooftop and uh, balance is uh, ground mount in uh, tn we have done two projects one for ashok leyland in ennor and uh, the other for ambe in madurai uh, we have uh, the full scope of experience like uh, we have done uh, projects in 300 volts we have done projects in string inverters central inverters uh, rooftop uh, with uh, various types of combination and various type groups so any kind of complexities in the engineering side we got we think we are really able to handle so that is briefly about our company and this we'll discuss as we go along thank you thank you for those round of introductions i'm indeed honored to be part of this panel so while the topic of tamil nadu is hot we will uh, ask mr devrajan for his inputs of course most of our inputs will be restricted to the rooftop solar segments so mr devraj can you take us through your experiences in the tamil nadu market and compare them with the policies or the experiences in other south indian markets that you've operated in 
what can the state do better and what is good here clearly we've done something good because we the rooftop sector in tamil nadu is one of the top three segments across india so please enlighten us with your experiences uh, in my view solar industry is undergoing a transformation like we are no longer a sunshine industry we are dependent on all the government agencies and the discoms for development so we need their cooperation at the maximum level to increase our solar generation at various places tamil nadu in particular i think is facing all these problems added to it is the net metering issue i think we are facing all such problems in across south india andhra karnataka here the added one is the net metering one for the industries so what uh, we are aiming is we are right now concentrating only for the capital consumption as far as rooftop is concerned if a company has a space only for its daytime consumption we are planning a uh, solar generation only for that particular space we are not trying for net metering or anything because knowing it's a very cumbersome process and apart from that there is this so even all the regulations we have to do work a lot to get through in tamil nadu not only in tamil nadu even in other states we have similar issues i think now the solar industry everywhere is facing this problem even in a progressive state like gujarat has lot of restrictions like uh, there's a cap on rooftop there's a cap on uh, net meter rates everything each uh, state has a different policy so we have we have to live with this i believe i think if uh, under these circumstances if we are able to do so much work in tamil nadu i think definitely if there is more conducive environment we can increase our presence that's my view as far as the policies are concerned now i feel it's uh, equal i don't say any drawback is there definitely net metering for industries is a big drawback but uh, there are some industries which are able to get that based on their uh, contacts or their influence so i think uh, since uh, we are uh, tamil nadu has the maximum rooftop installations in the country i think it should be a possibility only thing is we have to work only people with sincere effort are able to do that like uh, uh, maybe the tvs group or someone they are able to get through all these things also so i won't say we are lagging in anything i think karnataka also we are facing that but we have to go and push this government uh, the main reason i would say is power is becoming surplus everywhere so naturally eb being a 100 per 100 year old company they will try to defend their policies so we have to fight with them to compete and try to get all these things done so the rate at which tamil nadu market is growing for solar i think uh, they, we won't say it is very bad pardon me what's up no right now uh, there is no net metering you no know, like uh, industry the previous uh, whatever net metering has been installed people are able to get the payments for the new uh, installations we are not getting net metering at all like except for the residential sector sector other th- places we don't get net meter at all we have to wait maybe there are a lot of pending applications or uh, only with influence we are able to push those things Um, thank you so much for highlighting your experiences in Tamil Nadu. Clearly, the state can do much better if net metering is provided to the industrial segment, is what I hear. So, let's go to the north from uh, Mr. Ashish Agnihotri on what his experiences have been in the north. Do you think that the rooftop solar segment can do much better? Clearly, the rooftop solar segment in India has not even achieved 5% of the target of 40 gigawatts that has been set uh, by our uh, prime minister so what are we missing here can you enlighten us uh, you put it correct, correctly uh, unlike most countries uh, india's growth in solar has been predominantly on the utility side out of the roughly 18 to 20 gigawatt that we installed uh, rooftop will be roughly around 1 1/2 gigawatt so uh, the pace at which it should have been grown probably is not there because if you see germany or bangladesh or us the rooftop segment is equal to or maybe 
so in some places even higher than the um, utility space because utility scale projects come with their own set of challenges in terms of grid stability and the other points that uh, we were hearing in the first panel discussion that was going on and Ma'am Geeta was pointing out in terms of uh, the challenge that uh, a utility faces. So uh, on the reasons why India is probably not able to uh, grow the rooftop space in spite of so many advantages would be uh, as the point that was being discussed in case of Tamil Nadu and this is uh, also uh, a case for Pan India as well. Um, in the other states the issues are different for net metering one is like uh, uh, the maximum capacity that can be loaded is uh, 1 megawatt or the sanction capacity whichever is lower. Number two, in case you have warehouses uh, where the consumption is not there. So uh, you, uh, since you cannot load more than your sanction load, so we are unable to utilize those large rooftops. Uh, case in point will be uh, central warehouses, IFCI, Food Corporation of India, all those kind of warehouses there. They have large rooftops, but uh, there is no consumption. Then, um, if you see in terms of which kind of segments that they are coming out, one is the CNI segment, the other is the residential segment. So, in, uh, for the residential segment, as of now, the credit ratings are not there. So, a lot of institutional players do not really invest. I think uh, Sri Ramakrishna will be able to better highlight it in terms of the need for the credit rating of individual if they want to go really granular really small scale so they need to have that kind of credit ratings to really install until that time either they are going to be dependent upon the discoms for the collections again that mechanism is also under discussion for a long long time it has really not uh, happened as of now so until unless these three four things are not taken care of rooftop will not really be able to get the heights or the targets that are being assigned to it um, thank you for those uh, wonderful inputs it is the key difference between the Indian rooftop sector and probably the European rooftop sector is that most European rooftops work on a fear and tariff model and uh, the tariffs were at a point very, very high and that was the primary reason for the success of the fear and tariff model. Whereas in India, very few states actually offer um, a fear and tariff model uh, for rooftop owners to scale up. Uh, secondly, uh, the reason that you pointed out the credit worthiness is a very critical point. Um, today, if you say India is BAA rated, it means that half of India is not credit worthy and the other half only is credit worthy. Developers like CleanMax and Amplus are able to provide solutions to companies that have an established credit rating, which is decided by banks and various rating agencies. So what happens to the other sectors? Are there other business models that we can explore is a question that uh, we have. Do you know that uh, if feed-in tariff can be explored for other sectors? Uh, that is a question that is under discussion again. A um, lot of people are saying that um, because of the advent of the reverse auctions, the industry is facing a lot of challenges because people then bid, go and go on and bid for uh, really, really low amounts and then uh, the entire chain comes under pressure. Uh, I from the EPC side can definitely vouch for that. Uh, then uh, uh, if you really want to promote a sector, uh, that is the way uh, that has been done across the world. Uh, so if you want really want to promote this sector, especially the rooftop segment, then I think uh, this uh, strategy has its merits. So at least for some time, I think we should have considered the uh, feed-in tariffs before going in forward. All right. Thank you so much for your inputs. Uh, so the next key point that was raised was about credit rating. So we have a, a vice president from ICRA, which has done a lot of uh, credit rating uh, work for both rooftop uh, projects as well as uh, ground mount projects in the country. I uh, request uh, Mr. Girish Kadam to enlighten us on his experiences of uh, credit rating rooftop solar projects. How easy is it for it to raise debt for both credit worthy, non credit worthy institutions? And more importantly, everybody in the room is not talking about the agency that is affected the least by solarization, which is the DISCOM. I would also request you to talk about the health 
of uh, financial health of discoms that uh, provide a lot of these solutions. So in terms of the rating coverage that we have in the solar sector, in fact, uh, <clears throat> we have uh, quite a good amount of coverage on the uh, IPPs or the, the solar uh, developers in the uh, grid connected IPP domain. Uh, in fact, the rooftop segment has uh, uh, shown some pro progress of late, so we don't have uh, that significant uh, rating coverage on the rooftop players, except quite a few where uh, the likes of uh, Clean Max Solar, which is a leading player in that segment, we have been able to uh, get a chance on rating coverage for uh, such entities. But uh, based on our experience, what I would like to highlight here is uh, when it comes to the counterparties uh, essentially in the commercial and the industrial space, uh, that's where the model has uh, become quite economical uh, uh, and it's quite a win-win situation. Uh, both from the developer's perspective and as, as well as from the CNI uh, uh, consumer's perspective. And uh, given the fact that, you know, the prevailing grid tariffs for the CNI category is pretty much on a higher side, averaging anywhere between eight and a half to, you know, 10 rupees in across most of the states. And against that, the, the wetted average PPA tariff offered by uh, the, the race cores or the developers uh, in such a model is very much close to five to five and a half. So there is a quite a significant buffer uh, which we see, uh, especially for the projects which are coming up in the Karnataka solar policy where there are a lot of benefits which have been offered under the regulations. So that's one, so uh, that's quite sustainable model and it's a quite win-win situation when it comes to CNI segment and that's where uh, a, there is a significant uh, room for further uh, penetration and further improvement in the uh, rooftop installations all across the country. Having said that, there are certain regulatory issues in terms of the artificial cap of one megawatt, which is being posed and, you know, the constraints over the, the capacity which can be installed as, uh, uh, as we just got discussed in the panel discussion. So those are the issues which will continue to hamper, you know, the growth even in the CNI segment. So that's where, you know, the regulations require quite consistency all across the states. Now, uh, coming to the second category, which comes about, uh, which is about residential uh, segment. That's where, you know, you require uh, a, a, a strong policy push, uh, B, uh, a significant incentives uh, for the discoms, uh, you know, to actually push for that. Uh, three, uh, a subsidy support, very much essential. And uh, uh, for uh, overall clarity in terms of implementation of these rooftop installations. In fact, uh, if you uh, see the recent concept note which has been put forward by MNRE uh, under the Srushti scheme, uh, which talks about all this. I mean, uh, the whole idea is to uh, get the DISCOMs at the forefront and to uh, ensure that the DISCOMs act as the key implementing agency for uh, you know, uh, for development of rooftop installations for the residential category and also the other categories. Uh, and having said that, uh, the, the note also talks about higher incentives uh, for higher uh, installations. Uh, plus the subsidy support, which is capped at 30% of the benchmark uh, capital cost for the residential sector. Uh, more importantly, in my view, uh, you know, uh, uh, the power sector being a concurrent subject, uh, uh, which comes under the both purview of central as well as state government, and DISCOMs being the state government own, it all depends on uh, the willingness, the proactiveness, and the support which comes at a state level to ensure, uh, you know, these uh, policy packages and the implementation in the right spirit. Otherwise, what we have been seeing is a lot of resistance from the DISCOMs in terms of providing various approvals, uh, giving the net metering connections and so on, because ultimately from the DISCOMs perspective, what matters is the revenue loss because of, uh, you know, the, uh, the rooftop installations, whether it is residential or a CNI segment. Uh, and the fact that, uh, in fact, the revenue loss is pretty significant when they lose uh, high paying cross subsidizing CNI customers. Uh, so that's where the, the, the resistance comes from. Uh, so to promote the sector, you require a strong policy push, you require a strong willingness and the proactiveness from the DISCOMs, you know, towards honoring these uh, policies. So that's what I would like to highlight. Now lastly, in terms of the financial health of the DISCOMs, yes, uh, that has been the uh, main uh, area of concern for the entire power sector across the value chain. In fact, if you look at the overall book losses of the uh, state-owned distribution utilities in financial year 2016 was close to about 60,000 crore. Uh, 
Uh, thanks to Uday's scheme, uh, uh, there has been a significant reduction in the interest cost uh, because of the deleveraging and the debt refinancing which has happened as part of the Uday scheme. Uh, which is why you know the uh, uh, the book losses are estimated to come down quite considerably. So based on our analysis, uh, it should be uh, closer to 35,000 crore in the uh, current financial year, FY 2018. So there is a significant reduction uh, uh, that's predominantly because of reduction in the interest cost and partly because of uh, efficiency improvements in terms of reduction in the 18C loss levels, which we see in uh, some of the states. Uh, and also partly because of you know the tariff revisions which are happening in across the states so certainly uh, the uh, overall liquidity and the financial performance uh, has improved uh, uh, somewhat thanks to that but going forward uh, what matters from the discoms perspective is a how fast they curtail the uh, inefficiencies more importantly the atnc loss levels and how timely and how regular and how adequate is the tariff revision so that's uh, the key, you know, for the sustained financial turnaround of the discoms going forward. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for your input, Skitish. So. Yeah. So. Yeah. So the announcement of free power or highly subsidized power is actually uh, allowed. Yeah, yeah, it's allowed under the Electricity Act, provided the uh, subsidy support is provided by the state government in a timely fashion. The problem here at a state level and when it comes to discoms, the, uh, the, the uh, subsidy announcement is done, but the subsidy support doesn't come timely and it's not even adequately. So that directly impacts you know, the cash flows of these uh, state-owned discoms. And in a way, what has happened in the past, because of the cash flow issue, they have been dependent on the short-term borrowings, which is why uh, you know, the debt burden for the distribution sector has gone up. That's one reason. And second is obviously the lack of tariff revision in the past period. So, which is not the case in last three to four years, even though the tariff revisions have started happening, they have been pretty modest in the range of four to five percent. So, more importantly, the subsidy support should come from the state government to the discoms in a timely fashion. And, you know, this year being a pre-election year, what we anticipate is that uh, with more focus on rural electrification, with higher uh, power supply hours towards the agricultural sector, we, uh, we, we, we see that the subsidy burden is going to rocket for most of the power discoms across India. So in that context, the subsidy dependence should further go up. In fact, as per our analysis, uh, last financial year, FY17, the overall aggregate subsidy dependence for the distribution entities on all India basis was about 80,000 crore, okay? And in some of the states like Punjab, uh, or for example, Maharashtra, or for example, in, uh, in southern states, like in Telangana, so the subsidy dependence has gone up quite considerably depending on their policies. So, so basically he says that financial health is worsening and uh, what it would mean for solar is discounts would be reluctant to give approvals because solar takes away some of the most creamy customers that they have. So it is important to ensure that discounts are also uh, incentivized to provide solar solutions. So that's why he said the MNRE policy note from Shrishti incentivizes discoms based on their performance in adopting solar solutions. No, no, you are saying subsidy for residential segment is you're not, you're not. Uh, so uh, you can actually in fact the subs the you're welcome to write to the MNRE officer who is implementing the Srishti scheme the scheme for responding to the scheme the date for responding to the scheme is over but i'm sure they'll take in your comments but unfortunately the shrishti scheme actually promotes more subsidies for residential because the per unit cost of a residential uh, solar system is much higher than a per unit cost of a regular rooftop system just because of 
um, size constraints. So you're welcome to write to them, sir. So uh, let's go on with the discussions. So while you've addressed the financial constraints, the market constraints, and the regulatory constraints, let's also understand the practical operating constraints that uh, solar EPC developer or an EPC vendor faces uh, while he's at site. So to this extent, I expect, uh, uh, request uh, Mr. Balian to yeah. Thank you, Ramkrishnan, for giving me opportunity to address uh, the solar rooftop uh, issues coming up and challenges we are facing. Uh, as the uh, Everest is a roofing solution provider company, we are providing the uh, solar solutions in two stages. Uh, we are into the pre uh, manufacturer, supplier, designer and the erection, uh, doing the erections of the pre-engineer steel building and the metal sheets, AC sheets and other solutions. Uh, what we are uh, uh, witnessing nowadays that the various customers are asking the solar loads and the, they are also uh, asking about the suitability of the solar plant layout. Uh, so we, we, are, we are solving the problem in the two stages. First is the pre-installation or pre-construction stage while suggesting the customer what should be the slope of the uh, building, what should be the type of the roof, whether it should be standing seam, MR24 or uh, screw down or what, what else and what is the orientation of the roof, north, south facing, east facing, whatever it is. Uh, also advising the, while designing the building, uh, there should not be any chimneys, any obstructions over the roof. So this is the pre-stage while constructing the building, while coming into the second stage uh, where we have already installed a lot of roofs, uh, metal roofs, AC seats rooms, roofs. We are analyzing the building based on the load analysis, which is not being considered for in earlier stages when solar was not uh, the option. So we are again uh, taking the uh, old drawings, as built drawings and analyzing the building, whether it is safe enough to take the sufficient load uh, to install the solar or advising the customers, consultants to remove the metal sheet which is damaged or asbestos sheet which is not suitable for that, that is also being considered. Like this way, we are uh, as the uh, India target is 40 gigawatt for next 2022, this is one of the challenges we are trying to sort out and increasing the number of installations at various locations. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for your comments. Um, in conclusion, we're saying that the present policies and the present market conditions are not very conducive for us to achieve the 40 gigawatt target. Uh, we'd want higher uh, net metering capacities, consistent net metering policies, as well as uh, ease of approvals for us to actually go about uh, hitting those numbers. And all this can happen only by ensuring that the discoms have an active say in the policy as well, because they are the most affected in terms of revenue loss. So if you have any questions, uh, uh, do we take it here or would you want, does anybody have any questions? on? Normally when you are applying the net metering, uh, how much time they are taking, even all the governments except Tamil Nadu, all the governments, how much time they are taking to give the approvals and also for implementation? Normally, they are telling that one month uh, is a... Uh, 45 days. Is 45 in, days. In Karnataka and Andhra, we are able to get it in 45 days. 45 days. If 45 days not, they are not doing it. What is to be done? No, you have to use it only for your captive use then once it comes then we can start feeding it but net metering he has to give no 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 net metering in karnataka andhra all these places are even given by the private uh, recognized dealers mm -hmm. we can get the meters in tamil nadu only tangent core can give so in those places that issue doesn't come so, so that's why you must try to tamil nadu government the net meter should be no, we have already we have already discussing with them i think there are some issues they're this trying is, to sort it out. There's been a long standing That's problem. a lot of issues going on for the last two <laughs> years. <laughs> what is when they are going to complete the job? I don't know. 
we should have asked the previous panel about that sir these are regulatory issues for example tamil nadu does not give net metering for industrial consumers this has been a long standing issue for the entire state at least luckily they are accepting the applications we are in queue here <laughs> they are not rejecting these applications okay one big segment which had to be tapped on the roof uh, is the old industrial sheds see what happens there are more than a million square feet to analyze all over india potentially is there there no shade very few obstructions these the roofs are covered by asbestos sheets do you have any technology to fix on asbestos roof then you have got very huge potential these industries are paying 14 rupees 13 rupees per uh, kilowatt they approach us yeah we 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 are also witnessing such uh, type of requirements as the average is the roofing solution uh, asbestos sheet company itself it is uh, established from 1934 uh, we are studying the roof uh, roof uh, roof is, uh, situations what is this the most of the cases uh, i could take the one of the example one of the customer has uh, insisted us he was the, our competitor who wanted to remove asbestos sheet and wants uh, solar plant to be installed but uh, we studied the plant taken the uh, consultants studied uh, various options we have explored and the age we have find out the factors of the age also so we have decided not to go for the uh, asbestos sheets and we were able to convince the that customer that replace this with the metal sheet and go for the uh, then the solar plant we generally does, doesn't recommend but still uh, other people are coming and we are uh, having a one of more requirement of the asbestos sheet we are studying the that plant also based on the our engineering our experience and the uh, other factors we decide but as of now we have said no so to just to add to it i think as you rightly pointed out uh, doing it on asbestos is very difficult so what as a company we are doing it we are facing because we are in tamil nadu market coimbatore there are a lot of uh, textile mills around with asbestos sheet we are asking them to change the roof we would in case if they are going for a resco model we would also finance them differently for that scheme so that way we are work with some companies also so that's a possibility if the company is really interested in all those things they would uh, definitely undertake that So the say the same thing that there are resco companies who will uh, also do the opex in case you are not willing to do it yourself so that i think devraj has already covered it uh, do you think that there is very little r and d in india on rooftop solar i believe that we need to do uh, i mean much more in terms of innovation <laughs> thank you that is a point that you can probably say for a uh, lot of things um, and uh, had there been lot of r&d and we were there in time probably uh, there would have been much more manufacturing for all the entire supply chain of uh, solar it's not only about rooftop uh, that's a big sector and that is a big question for a lot of we can take this offline and then we can probably in case anybody can we have a mic here please any of the roofs are located in the east west direction so how did you find in actual installation what are the difficulties you face are you are advising them to change to north south or you are still installing in east direction and what is your this one it's a question for epc i don't know if it's an east to west uh, slope but uh, we typically do not ask the customers to change it it's an increased cost uh, to the customer but obviously uh, south facing roof will generate more energy and therefore deliver a lower cost of power east west will be marginally costlier my uh, experience not come to more than 1 2% of the uh, value the other thing probably you can do is in um, uh, do some capex and uh, get some additional height and then Uh, once both are level then you can install on that so again the point is your capex increases and your cost of uh, like the return on investment will definitely be lower than uh, probably a south facing uh, roof so exactly the economics you know like uh, north south will have a better economics 
people are already crying for so, such high cost for solar. Now, if you ask them to increase in the structurals by adjusting in the east-west direction, if the economics works out, maybe for large scale, it will work out. We have done some east-west uh, installations also. But in terms of energy, uh, the loss are different, no? It is, it is not that much variation. It may be 1 to the 2 percent or how much? In Tamil Nadu, there is not a big difference, sir. Like maybe in other states, because Tamil Nadu is nearer to the equator, we don't have such uh, yeah, exactly. uh, major differences. Our economics doesn't suggest a big, maybe the payback increases by about 6-7 months. Yeah, that's all. There is not much. Yeah, that's the difference. Okay, thanks. Any more questions here? So I think with this, we should bring an end to this panel. I thank uh, the entire panel for this very interesting session, especially Mr. Ramakrishnan, who has moderated the session. Also an equally interesting presentation wa was given by Mr. Balakrishna Singham uh, from Simmons Gamesa on wind hybrid, so, uh, wind solar hybrid systems. So I'll now take this opportunity to request Mr. Balak uh, Mr. Ramakrishnan, who's the session moderator, to present some small uh, token of uh, appreciation to all the fellow panelists. So Mr. Girish Kadam from ICRA. Mr. Devraj from Fourth Partner Energy. And Mr. Gambhir Balyan from Everest Solar. Mr. Ashish Agnihotri from Oriano Solar. And can I request Mr. Ashish to present the memento to uh, Ramakrishnan, sir?